Welcome to the Bible Memory Goal. My name is Josh, and I'm trying to memorize the entire New Testament book by book. I'm currently six book in, six books in, working on my seventh, which is Second Thessalonians. And I'm hoping to encourage and inspire you to make Scripture memory part of your daily or weekly routine. Uh, today, I want to talk about choosing a book of the Bible to memorize. If you're looking to do an extended portion of scripture as part of your memory, whether that's, you know, just a chapter, but I, I recommend you challenge yourself to do a book of the Bible. How do you choose that book? Um, and I'm going to kind of give you some thoughts and ideas based on what I've had to do as I've been choosing these different books and the pros and cons of having memorized those books. Because I, I'm as I'm in now about six months, I've been able to kind of see some of the benefits and, and non-benefits, detractions of doing it certain ways. So I'm going to basically break this out into four different ways. The first is I'd like to think about a book as abstract versus concrete. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's take the book of Jonah as one example of being more concrete versus a book like Galatians, which is talking about ideas and um, just different thoughts. So you've got more abstract thoughts versus a concrete story with a concrete character that has concrete dialogue. A lot of times that's easier for us to remember, or at least more enjoyable than a lot of these abstract. Because what I've found as I've been memorizing is that I'm having to memorize a lot of words that um, are not part of my daily vernacular. It's not things that I would normally say. And therefore, it's I've had to find creative ways to memorize those pieces of Scripture, those portions of Scripture. Um, and in doing so, a lot of times I'm having to separate the meaning from how I memorize it so that I can memorize it. And then as I memorize, I'm hoping that as I go along, and this has been true for me, that the more I say it, the more it gets memorized. And now I can meditate and hopefully understand the meaning more and more. But that's harder to do when you're dealing with an abstract portion of Scripture as opposed to a concrete concrete, story-based portion of Scripture. So even if you just wanted to go into one of the Gospels and do a portion of the Gospel with, you know, the Jesus stories, I can completely understand why you would want to do that, and it makes a lot of sense to me. After we go with abstract and concrete, I would also deal with length, using the Gospels as an example. The Gospels are probably going to be some of the longest portions, at least of the New Testament. We're not going to, I'm not even going to deal with the Old Testament right now, but of the New Testament that's going to take me a long time to memorize because we're talking about long chapters and a number of chapters. Whereas you've got Philemon, which is just a single chapter, 25 verses. I was able to memorize that in a single day. I mean, it took me a couple days to really put it in my long-term memory, but it's, it's a relatively short book of the Bible. But you're probably going to want to find that happy medium. I would start with a book that has, let's say, four chapters, maybe five, if you really wanted to tackle something. And make sure you're not too ambitious about it. You know, maybe I want to do this over the course of a year instead of trying to say I'm going to do it over the course of weeks or maybe even a couple months. Because... As I'll explain in a few minutes, we need to make sure that we maintain that passion for this project of memory uh, or else we're just not going to be able to do it. So, yeah, there's a lot of different lengths. Um, remember, I'm, I ran a marathon back when I was in college, and I remember even doing cross country in high school. The first two miles, you're sprinting, you're feeling good. But towards the, you know, once you get into the latter half of any race like that, you start to peter off and start getting tired. The same is going to happen with long extended memory portions of scripture. So you want to make sure that you don't chew off, bite off more than you can chew. That's how it goes. Uh, so that's the length. But in addition to that, you also have to think about the impact, right? So what is the impact of that book for you in your life? in relation to how long it is, in relation to whether it's an abstract or concrete. So all of these things kind of work together. So in my example, I would say Philemon versus, let's say, a book like 1 John. 1 John, a lot of us might find a little more that we can pull out of that book than we can out of Philemon, which is just a very specific book about a very specific topic dealing with this slave Onesimus and his owner Philemon. So that might not have the same impact that it would if we were to choose 1 John or Galatians or we were to choose even something like Jonah, which I think has a lot of great stuff. If you were to look into the prodigal prophet, and I'll have a link to that book in the description below. Jonah is a worthwhile book to memorize, in my opinion, and it's not that long, four chapters, and it's very concrete, and, and it does have some great impact. 
So that's one way that you can look at it. Um, but I think the most important, and the reason why I've left this for the last, the most important is to consider what really engages you. Maybe what has engaged you in the past, what's had uh, you know, just this impact on your life, whether it was a certain verse that really came at the right point in your life. Well, maybe you can expound on that and, and memorize the entire book surrounding that verse so it's not taken out of context anymore. What is going to inspire you? What is going to hold your attention long enough that you can memorize the entire book? I'm going to go back to 1 John, just because I'm going to pick on this book right here, where a lot of people love 1 John because they know that first chapter. But the problem is chapters 2 through, goodness, I think there's th four chapters in, in the book of 1 John, they kind of peter out because they lose that passion. Um, most of their passion was was kind of front-loaded on the first chapter, and they lose it as they go along. And so I've known a lot of people who've just memorized half of a book because they've kind of lost their, their passion for it. So see if you can find a book where you can maintain that kind of passion and desire to memorize throughout the entire book. And that way there's a better chance that you'll finish memorizing that entire book. So those are some of the ways that I choose how I would memorize a book. Right now, I'm just trying to choose based on a way that will continue to motivate me. So I don't want to go to, because I'm trying to memorize the whole New Testament, I don't want to go straight to a, uh, a huge book of the Bible, one of the Gospels or Romans or Acts for some reason, you know, one of those, because that would take me months and months and months. And right now, I'm trying to build up these short wins, these First Thessalonians, these Philemons, James, all of these you know, one to five chapter books are giving me confidence and helping me to hone this craft of extended scripture memory so that when I do attack a book like the the Gospels or one of the other, you know, first, second Corinthians, Revelation, uh, I'll be better prepared for that. And so that's how I'm approaching it. But that's because I'm doing a lot more broad scripture memory for you. Maybe it's looking at a specific book, one book that you can do for this year. And choosing that book is very important. So if you think there's something I'm missing here, leave that in the comments below. I'm always encouraged by any uh, comments, shares, likes that you can give this video. But more than anything, I just hope hope that you will dedicate yourself, spend a little time, just five to 10 minutes a day, or maybe even three to four times a week, just doing a little bit of scripture memory, because over time that compounds and it becomes something even better than you might've imagined. Mm -hmm.